Hey everybody, I'm back with another Sunday Grind. Um, some of you might, might be thinking it's about time. Well, the holidays came up and everything, but finally playing again, and here we go. Uh, I'm playing five tournaments now. I'll keep adding them. I'll probably have these be about hour-long videos. I don't know how many I'll do. Um, yeah, we'll kind of see. Uh, and yeah, we'll see how this goes. Hopefully I can make a big cash and make it kind of exciting. Um, so I'll go over the turns. I'm in the 200Ks, here's the 100K on Lock Poker. Here's the 100K on what was formerly known as Bodog, now known as uh, Bovada for US players. Uh, I'll get into uh, some of the interesting things I've noticed about this already. Um, here we just have a 2K turbo on Bovada. Um, $5,500 guarantee, uh, small buy-in, like $5 buy-in or something, with three buys, I think. Or, no, I think this one's a freeze-out. Yeah, this is a freeze-out. This one's a rebuy one, uh, like $5 buy-in, rebuy, the turbo, and add-on, and all that good stuff. Another small buy-in tournament, but these are the two big ones. Uh, the other ones are just kind of to supplement my grind. I'm... Moving down in stakes a decent amount, not playing as many of the $100, $80, $60 tournaments. I'll play a couple of them probably, but I've been out of it for a while, so uh, kind of trying to ease back into it a little bit in the sense that I just don't want to throw that much money at uh, all these tournaments. But yeah, hopefully you guys will get something out of it if you choose to watch it, and we'll see. Yeah, oh, I guess I'll talk about Bravada just because it's weird. First of all, I thought Bodog was seizing all operations in the United States. That's what I was on the impression of. That's what I was telling people. That's what I honestly thought. Um, I'm really glad they're not because really I only play on Locke and Bravada. I've thought about joining Cake, but I haven't actually done that yet. If I ever get a big score, I might throw a little bit of money on there and see if I can do something with it. Um, but... Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I, the first thing I noticed is, the first thing I noticed, I guess, was it looks different, it feels different, uh, the graphics are different, the sounds are different, which is interesting. Um, I'm going to probably miss some of the Bodog stuff eventually, but uh, I uh, also noticed there are no names. If you There are no pictures, there are no names for the players. There's no usernames. There's numbers. And I'm assuming these are the numbers of the order they entered the tournament in, because I late registered, and so I'm 196. How many players are in this tournament? 203, and it's still late registering. So, I just registered a little while ago, so I'm guessing this is what order you registered in the tournament in, and it just gives you a number instead of showing your name, which is really weird and is going to totally change the dynamics of playing on Bovada compared to other sites. It's going to be really interesting to see how this changes things because then, you know, some guys that used to play against Troy and, you know, um, there's a ton of people I used to play against all the time and uh, Dan Inman or what, I think that was what his name is. Oh, jeez. Um, because this is a turbo rebuy, I think I'm going to call this guy. Oh, wow. He had me by one card. Well, that's okay. It's not a huge, huge problem. I, I think it's the right call. I think if I'm that close to being right, I, I still like my call. Um, interesting. Oh, see, it's all throwing me off of how this whole site works. I'm folding that because I want to rebuy. Um, yeah, yeah, it looks all different, but I mean, the dynamic, like, I also late registered for the 100k here, so I'm 542, so I'm one of the last people. It, it's just like, you don't get that metagame going with other players that you've played with forever and you know I remember a couple players I kind of would know how that I knew that guy was a shark and I knew this guy had never really played before at least played regularly and I'd play them differently because of that you know certain players um, 
who I play with a lot, I, I kind of got their style down and I'm sure they got my style down and, and you kind of play based on, you know, like this guy likes to, to three bet a lot or this guy doesn't three bet at all. Now, I don't know if you can still do notes. I would assume you can still do notes on players or maybe not. I, 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 I Maybe they got rid of the whole note thing too and it's all going to be like how you can see how people are playing in that one tournament that you're playing against them, you know? So this is going to be really interesting to see how it plays out. I don't particularly like that flop, but I feel like it would be a mistake not to bet out at it. When I showed so much strength pre-flop, he can still give me credit for a lot of hands. Uh, he's not going to, though. I feel like I could try to raise this and take it down. Um, but I think I'm just going to give up on it this time. But, you know, I don't know if you can even take notes on players. I know Bodog's always been kind of against that kind of stuff. Like, uh, see, I, I, I'm still using these for graphics. I don't even know that I'm counting down in this tournament. Um... Yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'll see if I like it or not. Right now, I, I, I don't particularly. Although, I think I actually have a little bit of an advantage. Or like, it's better for me than most players because I typically am not the most aware of the metagame with other um, regulars. I, I don't... I feel like that's an edge other regulars have on me is the metagame in, in that aspect. And uh, it's not that I don't deal with it at all. It's just I think that other players are probably a little bit better than me with it. With the, the straight draw, I'm definitely going to... I'm not folding that, and I might as well just try to get it right there. I'm not trying to value bet for anything, so... Although I could have gave him the chance to bluff at it, but it's not worth... I don't know, maybe that wasn't the right thing to do. I should have thought about it a little bit more. I'm also playing with a new mouse, which... I got it for Christmas, and my other one broke. And it has a little things that are funky to it. It's weird that I'm complaining about my mouse, but... I don't know, it just feels different, and I don't particularly like it, I guess. We'll see. Maybe I just need to get used to it. So I think this is a very good time to put some pressure on, not let people get in too cheaply and, and try to isolate here, I think I just kind of got a shove. Oh, text message. And my mouse is freaking out on me, so I don't like it. Yeah. Oh, I didn't make it? Oh, jeez. Maybe this, this mouse is no good. We'll see. I don't know if that was actually my mouse or my computer freaking out. I thought it was my mouse, but maybe it's my computer. Here's a good hand to see. Okay, this is a really weird play. And I think I uh, gotta get out of here. Because it's a really strong play, and I might not have this guy beat. Oof. Well, I would have lost to this guy. So, interesting. So that guy played jacks like they were the nuts. Which, I don't absolutely hate, but I don't really like. Uh, again, I'm very nitty at times. So, oops. I gotta get used to this bravada thing. Um, I, I, I get way too nitty at times, and that's one of my biggest weeks is getting too passive. But a situation like that, 
I mean, it's tough because he's put in a tough spot because all he's done is one raise. He has a pretty strong hand. And, uh, I fire out a bet here. It looks stronger than the normal continuation bet. should have here I just gotta go with it hope it kind of holds up yeah I don't think I played that hand well I haven't played well so far but I'm also somewhat rusty This is really strange. Uh, that's not what I want. Oh well. And a turbo when I late registered and had less than three big lines left. I don't think that's a bad play right there. I probably should have shoved it in earlier. I'll look for some other tournaments to play. Um, although four isn't a bad number. There's someone I'm breaking back in. It's a good flop. Uh, got one right here's an early position. I'll still pop it. Um, I don't want to slow play this too much, partly because if a five comes, it kills my hand. You know, it's just. It's not an, it's a really good hand, but it's not an unbeatable hand. So I might as well try to push it now. Get my value. I guess there's no reason to still play this one all that much. Uh, I really think I probably have the best hand here. And here I have a good hand and a good draw, so that might have been a little strong. Well, we'll see. He's got the best hand without, or same hand without the draw. Well, I got myself in a good spot there. Um, I'm kind of surprised he's willing to put it in with what he did. Again, it's, I don't even see what's going on a lot of the time. That's my turn and stuff. I'm so unused to this. Um, I could have played that. Uh, over here, I didn't even see what happened. He just folded, looks like. Um, my last bet might have been a little strong. I probably should have gone for a little bit more value. I probably should use my time bank to uh, think about a bet size. Over here, uh, I mean, I had a really good hand, and, you know, I, I was a little vulnerable in the sense that he could have easily had me, and I would have been drilling to a spade, but I can't fold there, obviously. Um, I don't know. I, I don't think I played it all that bad. I got... I mean, he just called me on two streets, and then... I don't know why. Are you calling free flop and then on the flop? I don't know why he's so willing to go with it on the turn there, and he wasn't willing to go with it. I don't know. I don't know why he chose to play it the way he did. I really don't. I think he just kind of. Well, I gotta go with this. I think he just kind of thought, you know, I'm not gonna fold this hand, so I might as well go for it, and I'm gonna lose to both of it. Oh no, I'm not. How's a lucky river after unfortunate flop and turn? 
Hmm. Again, I definitely feel really rusty, and I feel like I it takes me a lot longer to make my decisions, and I'm not very clear on my decisions, and I'm not really even like very focused. I gotta do this to. Uh, Oops, that wasn't what I wanted to do. Now I gotta fix it. But to get my poker tracker working, I need to do stuff like that. Which is frustrating, but for some reason, it's just kind of how it works. And I don't know why my poker tracker does that. But it does. I've been thinking about getting a hold of manager just to get a program that seems to work a little bit easier, but I don't know, I don't really want to pay the money for it when I already have a program that does pretty much the same thing. This is going to be tricky for me. Um, I, I don't even think you can put notes on players, even for like that specific tournament, which is pretty crazy. I, I don't know of another site that does anything like this. And I don't know why they decided to do this. And maybe it's just there's something I'm not saying. Do they do it in cash games too? Um, I've thought of a poker site should do this at times just to do something different. But I'm surprised a site that's already established, like, I mean, they're not like one of the leaders, but a site that's established like Bodog would go and do something like this. It, that really surprises me. I kind of got to push this one because I'm really, I'd be really surprised if he had an ace because he didn't raise and I can't just check and let another overcard come. So, um, I'm going to do one more small bet and I'll try to check down the river. I feel like that's, that's the way to go. Get some value out of a seven. Actually, I almost want to make another bet. I'm going to make another small bet just because I feel like I can get a value out of a seven. Or he had a really weak ace and was just calling down with it. Well, that's not what I thought he had, but... And my initial plan of just checking down was probably right, I guess. Um, yeah, I misread where he was. I thought with an ace he would raise preflop, but an ace-deuce, I guess he decided to just call preflop. So... I don't know. I don't know what else to say about that. I was just off with my range, with reading his range. Um, out of position, I'm just going to call this with a couple people already, and I don't want to make a raise, miss, and then have to fire out or something. Um, I don't really like that. I kind of want to go over the top of this guy. If these guys both get out, yeah, I think I'm going to. I, just, I don't know why. This could be a really dumb play. I do have ace-king, so it's... I just... I don't feel like he's that strong. But I could be way off. Eh, wasn't way off, but I was kind of off. And we'll see if I stay alive. And I don't. That was a really risky play there. Uh, I don't know why I thought he wasn't that strong. I guess his stats kind of skewed me. Um, I don't know if you can see him, but his VP is 27. So I felt like I think that was a little bit of a reckless play there. But I still don't think it was horrible. If he had a, I feel like a lot of hands he might have tried to do that with. Again, I haven't even paying attention to this over here because I, I'm so unused to it. That's pretty reckless play, I guess. I don't think it's a horrible play. Probably not a great play. Uh, his calling range is gonna kind of kill me, but I feel like he would have made that play, that raise. I just was feeling he's making that raise a lot lighter than it looked like he would be making that raise. So, I don't know, a little bit of intuition, I guess, which was kind of off. So, I, 
I don't know why, but yeah, it's probably much too reckless of a play to make. But I don't know. If I win that coin flip, I all of a sudden have a bunch of chips. So, but when you're playing multi-table tournaments, I usually go with the philosophy of you know protect your 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 stack. If if you play reckless, it's hard to get all the way through a tournament and. That's not how I want to want to win tournaments. Is by just playing reckless. I want to play smart. Um, you know, you have to play some sort of reckless, recklessness, or you blind out, and I have a problem not playing with enough. But I, I think I, I I I should not have made that play in retrospect, just because it it just was hard to fold it. I felt like, and and it was it felt dumb to call. And you know, it's ace king versus queens. That, that, that situation happens a lot for a reason. Because, frankly, they're two really good hands that end up going all in against each other all the time. It's a really good flop for me. I even have outs if he hits a four. So I guess I'm doing good in these little small tournaments, but I'm out of one of my big ones already, which is too bad. And I'm not doing great in the other one. So, it's too bad. I always love making big runs, like I'm sure everybody does, making big runs in those the 100Ks and the big tournaments of the day, just because those are really exciting to make big runs in. I mean, the adrenaline that gets flowing from those is... It's not like when you're at a final table trying to make $1,000 or $1,500. When you're trying to make $25,000, and it's, you know, it's a significant amount of money that's going to change your life in a way in the near future. It's pretty exhilarating and a pretty intense moment and feeling. And I've definitely had that a lot. I've had one five-figure score, which was a pretty exciting thing to have happen. Been very close to a lot of others, but isn't that always the case? Make a small bet, make it look like it's kind of a continuation bet. I always feel like I'm kind of off when it comes to continuation bets. And I, I just, those dynamics, I feel like I'm always getting kind of, I'm always kind of transparent on. And I don't know why, not always, sometimes I feel like I'm doing pretty good with them and I know what's going on. Especially when the other players are playing really passive, I feel like I can pick up on that a lot. But when other people aren't being really passive, I feel like, and I think it's just kind of me getting frustrated when things don't go how I want them to. And whenever I bet, I feel like people are raising me whenever, or whenever I continuation bet without hitting, I feel like people are raising me whenever I continuation bet with it is because then people just fold. And I need to get more defined on hand ranges so that I can think, well, you know, I can represent ace-king here, and that's why I can make a continuation bet, but I can't represent this hand, so I can't continue with, you know, kind of stuff like that. And when I start really analyzing those things, I get a lot better with it, but usually when I'm analyzing those things is when I'm in, in I'm more in practice, if that's how you can say it, I don't know, but, um... Yeah. So yeah, I am doing pretty good in these two tournaments. A very, very long ways to go in both of them. They're both small buy-ins. Which, it's nice to do good in every tournament you play, but you want to do good in the bigger buy-ins than the smaller ones. Although, it is much harder to do good in the bigger buy-ins than the sm smaller ones. And I've definitely noticed my ROI on small tournaments is significantly higher, and that's no fluke. I'm almost sure of that. Although, I don't know. I've had some pretty good success in some pretty big buy-in tournaments. I did really good in the high roller on lock for a while. Um, I won it once. I cashed three or four, and this was in a month or something, I, I won it once, I got like third once, 
and I cashed a couple other times and I got final table a bunch of times um, and I remember one time I, I really screwed up and got bubble as like sixth because this was back when it was only like 40 or 50 people would enter it and uh Hmm. I think I'll give him this one, but I don't particularly like it. Again, I'm doing this to try to get my poker tracker to work. It's a good hand. It's a bad hand. It's a bad flop. Hmm. gonna be really interesting just I mean because I just don't know who I'm playing with here I simply don't and the only way you can tell is by like the however many hands you get with them at the table so it might totally change yeah it, it's so weird because it totally changes how everybody sees you nobody knows if you're a fish or not and I don't know if they're a fish or not so it totally changes the dynamics of how things work. Uh, I hope he doesn't wake up with a really strong hand. I think a lot of big hands he's going to have to fold anyways. A lot of hands have to be mine. He's either thinking about it or just isn't paying attention. And usually when they think about it this long, they fold, and so I'm hoping he does, yep. Good play by me. Bad flop for me, but that's okay. Good turn. <laughs> that's not why I said it's okay. I said it's okay because it happens, but... It's also okay because I have the chance to re-suck out on him. Um... This guy raises a lot of preflop, so I'm going to. I don't think he's gonna necessarily sort of fold, but I feel like I probably have a little bit of an edge being in position and taking control of a hand. If he goes all in, um, I pretty much have committed to calling, I think. I'm gonna have to be really vigilant watching these. See, I'm sitting out here, and I just, I had no clue. This is bad. Maybe there's uh, some options I can look at to change things. So I got an overpair. It's a pretty strong hand. Um, and I should play it as such. It's still vulnerable too. So I'm gonna shove him all in. Looking for a fold, obviously. Oh, he had a set. Okay, so that's not good. Um, I think that play would have worked if he didn't hit a set, so. Uh, I don't dislike that play at all. But it did not work out for me right there. I feel like my EV was very positive if it was just a matter of him hitting a set or not. So, no, he might have still called if, you know, it came like deuce 5 8 or something. He, there's a chance he might have called. I don't think he. Uh, he might have. I don't think the average player would call there because uh, they'd be so worried about an overpair or an ace 8 or something. A say it's not that likely, but it's possible. Um, or even an 8 9 or something. Or, yeah, but there's so many overpairs there that I could easily have. I think a lot of people have fooled there. Again, maybe not this guy. His stats are pretty loose, and why I 3 bet him there because I thought I had a better hand and in position. That's kind of why I'm raising here because I'm in position. I wanted to do 200. Okay. I need to look at options here. 
probably check that. It's not really a good spot for me. Both of them staying in. I think I can get out. And I'm not doing very well in the 100k tournaments right now. I'm not even using four color deck right now, jeez. all the options that are going to be good for me. Uh, I'm going to make a small raise here. I don't like raising from this early position with such a, in my opinion, metal of road hand. I'm trying to push the envelope with my aggressive nature, or with my aggressiveness, just because I know one of my biggest problems is getting too lax. The problem is, if I push halfway, it's even worse than not pushing at all, so... That's one of the big problems I have. So I'm going to raise here, and if he goes over the top of me, I'm going to shove. No, he doesn't go over the top of me, but he's called. I got the flush draw. Now I am going to shove because I'm kind of, kind of well. I can't shove now. Uh, I don't think I'm playing well at all. I think I'm playing very, very poorly. So hopefully you can learn from my mistakes and know what to do and don't do what I'm doing. I guess. I don't know exactly what it is I'm doing so wrong, but it really feels like I'm not playing well. I'm just not figuring out ranges very well. I'm not having a plan to stick with I just, I don't know. I, I feel a little more lost than, than normal, and it's not good. Probably it's because I've played so little in the last three or four months. And, you know, what's frustrating is, like, I feel like I should still be a winning player, even though I haven't played in so long. But, and I don't know if I'm being playing, being a losing player right now, but I just, it's really frustrating to feel like you're just not playing well at all. To know you've you've had a handle of the game a lot better than you currently do is is doesn't feel good. I'll put it that way. It feels like I it feel it's frustrating. I don't think I was getting much there, which is too bad. I think I can go with this one. Because I feel like he's could easily be shoving pretty light. He's only got ten. I mean, I only got ten big lines. So if someone else calls. I think I can get out of the way. But that's <sighs> too bad. Man. Oh wow. That's a very lucky way to win that pop. I still don't mind that uh, call. I feel like he's shoving fairly light there. Um, so, I don't think it's a bad call. With only 10 big blinds, it's hard to fold a turn of the big blind to a shove. I guess it is, a re oh, rebuy just kind of makes it even more like people are going to be shoving light, almost. So.
Okay, hopefully I can turn this day around a little bit because frankly, I, it's been 30 minutes and I'm very disappointed with myself. So hopefully I can start playing a lot better. And you know, sometimes it's simply you're not getting cards. There's a thousand out there. Okay. If yeah, he's pretty aggressive. Sometimes it's just the cards aren't falling right too, so it's hard for me to to know if it's really me playing that badly or if it's me not playing my best and the cards just aren't falling right. I think it's me not playing great. I don't think the cards are helping, but I I do think my play is not up to standard right now. this many people in the pot I think it's just about now at least to get out of the way but I think it's pretty clear just to move on to the next pot with four other people in and an overcard it's just what am I trying to do you know what how am I gonna um so oh this guy that one. check that one I'll call this guy I don't like flat calling very much, especially so many people behind me, but I don't want to raise that badly. Maybe that's the right play. But I probably should have made uh, probably should have made a raise to like eleven or something like that. And now you know give those people that propensity to call and other people at the, the idea of raising so now I'm betting when my hand is not as strong as it was before god I, I knew that was a bad continuation but to make but I did it anyways man Feels like, feels like I'm getting owned right now, which doesn't feel good. I mean, it doesn't feel like these players are just picking me apart. It just feels like I'm making the wrong decision when I kind of know it's not the greatest decision. Just kind of not thinking clearly, I guess, is, is an easier way to say it. So, I, you know, I'm doing this so you guys can learn, and it's almost easier to learn from mistakes than people who are playing really well. Sometimes, not always. It's easier to learn, I say, if, I, if I'm giving really good insight, which I'm probably not doing right now, but... Um, you know, there's probably still stuff to learn from the mistakes I'm making. And, you know, maybe... Maybe it's not as bad as I think. I just... I don't know. I do know I can win at this game, and I know I can turn it around. It's just a matter of if I'm going to or not. plenty of money at this game so I need to keep my confidence up. I do have a tendency to get down on myself a little bit and I feel like I am not overmatched but like I'm missing something or you know I have a, some holes that I need to fill in when I win I'm just getting kind of extra lucky and when I'm breaking even it's more where I am as a player. That's not really true if you just look at my results, it's not true, but 
when things aren't going well for me, I definitely get the tendency. I, a lot of people think, I can't believe how many people think sites are rigged and the random number generators are off, and uh, that just blows me away. I don't know why people think that so often. Um, I think a lot of people get really prideful about losing and thinking they're way better than their results show, and um, it's everybody else is getting lucky and the random num number generators are off and the sites are rigged and they can't believe what's going on and they get mad at that kind of stuff when things aren't going really well when it's really just variance and with me when things aren't going all that well I usually just think well am I really a great player or am I just getting lucky when I win and I guess great player is a little bit of an overstatement a good player a winning player and uh it's it's hard to, to say I'm not a winning player if you just look at my results, but I definitely that's the way I kind of go on to tilt instead of getting really mad and angry. Sometimes that does happen to me, but for the most part, I get more kind of I lose my confidence and I lose my edge because of my confidence, and I I second guess myself and I get all cluttered in the head and. I tilt that way much more than I tilt getting angry and, you know, blasting out chips and stuff. I've definitely done that before. I can remember a couple of times thinking to myself, I'm going to make this play just because I'm on tilt and I want to shove all my chips in there. It's definitely happened to me before, and I'm sure it's happened to about everybody, but I don't tilt that way as often as most people. I think I tilt in very different ways. So, I don't know. How do you guys tilt? I think my way is very unique, actually. I think most people tilt in the kind of getting angry, getting flustered, thinking things are rigged. At least that, those are the mo more vocal people. And, a lot, you know, whenever people are telling stories about their friends or to their friends about hands they got beat, they always talk about how bad everybody else played and how or there's nothing they could do and they played a riot. It's just whatever. I'm always looking for the way I could have played it better. the way I could have avoided the uh, unfortunate situation or the unfortunate demise. Wow, three comes through for him. Hmm. I've only been playing for 40 minutes, wow. It's amazing how uh, when you're out of it, or when you're in the middle of it, you know, you can grind for hours and hours and hours, and that's not a big deal, but... Uh, yeah, I'm gonna raise. I don't want to let more one person in. I'll just try to isolate this guy, get all his chips, and... If he's gonna raise 600, he's gotta be willing to put it all in. I don't know why he would raise 600 otherwise. Yeah. Can he do it again? Yes, he can. Well, that wasn't a bad play. That was just the cards. So maybe I'm not that bad. Maybe I'm just getting bad cards right now. I like to think of it that way. And I'm sitting out again because I can't keep track of the stupid. Sorry, now I'm calling things stupid. Shouldn't do that, especially when I was talking about how you shouldn't do that. Um, I really need to figure out this new software and... I mean, I'm losing it a lot there if I sit out so much. I'm going to try this for now. I'm going to move this table up. My break is starting. I'm going to move this table up here. Don't let me. So that now I can at least see my cards all the time. I don't have anything covering it. That will probably help. Well, once the lock tournament's go on break, I will stop this video, start part two. Um, I'll probably just do a new part every break. It's just easiest for me to do it that way. I think you guys like a little shorter episodes, around 30 minutes rather than an hour, maybe even 15. I used to do 15. That was tough on me because I just stop and start so often. I'm going to do these ones hour long or so, um, just because I feel like it works 
easiest that way for me and I, you know then I would have a lot of views if I did it any other way but anyways yeah I hope you guys uh, have enjoyed part one and hopefully I can play a little better in part two so uh, yeah thanks a lot for watching I'll see you guys in part two